As archaeologists at the Presidio, we're quite fortunate because we have a standing structure, which is not common at all on archaeological sites, to actually have standing structures that can inform the archaeology and archaeology that can inform the history of a building that people can see, they can walk into, they can touch, they can feel. And we're quite fortunate to have maps that tell us where to look. And we painted a map from 1792 onto this parking lot. So this is actually the western wall, the western outside wall of El Presidio from 1792. And you can see it goes back this way, and eventually it will intersect with the Officers Club, because the Officers Club now is a part of the original El Presidio, which is the fort that was established here in 1776 by the Spanish to protect the San Francisco Bay. The area that we're standing in right now is actually what would be the backyard or the very southern end of El Presidio. One of the reasons that we're back here is because we've excavated in other areas at the southern defense wall at the back of El Presidio and we found that they were throwing their trash basically out the back of their homes. So the number one thing that we find here at the Presidio is roof tile. And that's just because they had to make a lot of it in order to cover a whole lot of roofs. But the other kinds of things are ceramics, pottery, basically plates, bowls, tablewares, etc. And those are the kinds of things that can tell us who they were trading with, whether they were making things here locally at the Presidio, or whether they were trading more with Mexico, which was the case. Uh, almost all the ceramics from here actually come from Mexico. And from the patterns on the pottery, we can tell exactly what workshops and where those ceramics came from. They also are good time markers. They tell us exactly where we are time-wise. The other sorts of things that we find a lot of are the kinds of animals that were eaten here, mostly cow uh, and a little bit of sheep. But we also find some types of metal. For instance, over at the chapel site, we found a crucifix that had actually been buried at the corner, clearly to consecrate the site. And now we have that object in our collection. So one of our interests is how this chapel site from 1780 connects to our standing building here, the Officers Club, which we think is from about 1812 or so. We've left this open to let people know exactly the kinds of things that, that we find. And one of the most important things we find is trash because we are on a military post. At a military post, there are rules for behavior. But there's also humanity, and humanity very often deviates from those rules. And a lot of what we do in archaeology is sort of discovering those secrets, those deviations, the reality of the world. And we use trash or artifacts, uh, the architecture, which I pointed out, um, and even standing structures to understand that life. So, this is a really good example. This is big serpentinite stones that were quarried here at the Presidio and used to make the foundation for the adobe walls that would have been built on top of them, just like the Officers Club that is still standing. It has these exact same types of foundations. The archaeological site is quite shallow, and the way that we as archaeologists recognize the site is not only by big rocks like this, which are, are quite obvious, but also by the soil, its color, its texture, and its contents. So if we just take a look at, at some of this soil here, you can see that it's a rich, deep, dark brown color. Um, and that deep, dark brown color tells me as an archaeologist a couple of things. It says that people were probably here. Uh, and that's because people have a lot of organic material that just, that just comes with them. Uh, food waste and trash. And it makes a nice, deep, rich soil. Um, and there's also quite a few artifacts. 
So these are exactly the kinds of signals we're going to be looking for when we do excavations anywhere else in El Presidio. They're, they're the kinds of signatures, the artifacts and the soil that we looked for when we did excavations uh, back behind the officers club. Unfortunately, for our research purposes, we didn't find any Spanish colonial archaeology. What we did find was the first additions onto the Officers Club made after the U.S. Army arrived. At this point, they're starting to really invest in this adobe structure and try to make it look more like a, a Western United States Army post. What we found was the piers that supported that building, that officer's lounge that was put on the back here. And probably most interestingly, this fireplace here that would have formed part of the back wall and would have had a chimney out um, of this sort of lounge. Here in the front, we're able to help the adobe repair team by actually digging out the original builder's trench, the U-shaped ditch that the colonists dug in order to build this foundation and then put the adobe on top of. And this trench is interesting to us because it tells us about the way that this building was constructed. So the Spanish colonists had instructions that came from Madrid and went through Mexico City and then came from San Blas and then made their way up to San Francisco, which at the time was the very end of empire. It was at the very northernmost outpost of the Spanish Empire, and it was at the end of the Spanish Empire. So what we're finding archaeologically is that the colonists often improvise from these plans. There was a standard plan, and somebody in an office somewhere hundreds or thousands of miles away could say, you build it this way, but in the end they had to do it the way that they knew how, and the way that the labor would allow them to do it. So we've seen in a lot of our excavations that what the standard practice was supposed, what the Spanish practice was actually here, um, wasn't the royal decree, which is interesting to us. The other thing about the trench is that we found a little bit of smattering of, of cultural material in it, including some of the kinds of ceramics that might help us date exactly when this structure was built. We're curious to see how old this building actually is. So we're walking through the Moraga room. While we're in here, I should uh, point out this, which is the, the roof um, for the original structure. This was just recently taken off of the building, and you can see these pieces of blue tape on it. And on a lot of these, they have numbers, which is allowing somebody who's taken this piece of the roof, this roof sheathing off, to put it back on exactly where they found it. And that's because we're very interested in this roof. We used to call it the American period roof, but now we started calling it the Spanish roof because we think this might actually be the original roof that the American colonists found when they came to the Presidio. Wood was very scarce in the San Francisco Bay Area um, and it had to travel long distances in order to get here, especially wood uh, of this quality. And so the Americans probably reused the wood that they found um, that the Spanish had already put on the roof and this piece of wood here, you can actually see it curves as it heads down that way. So this is the full length of the tree. And fortunately for us as archaeologists, we have bark edges. And what bark edges allow us to do is figure out when the tree was cut. And if we know when the tree was cut, using a technique called dendrochronology, which is basically just dendro, which is tree, and chrono, which is time. So it's basically trees telling us time, trees develop rings year by year by year. And we can use those rings to tell us exactly when um, this roof was put on. So we can learn a lot more about this building just through something as simple as this, the wood that came off of the roof. So again, we're in what would have been the backyard of the original fort. This addition to the officers club was built sometime in the 1880s as a kitchen. We found a pit full of American period trash. Mostly it was bone and organic material like animal fat or foods, etc. But we saved the soil and in case anyone is interested in this period for research, 
they can test the soil for chemicals or signatures of, of what that food actually might have been. The other thing that we found were American period structural remains. These piers, they're spaced about six feet apart and they're very, very typical of the American period construction. The Army used this post and pier construction rather than sort of the larger continuous foundations uh, that we're used to now. And they mark a level of building construction that we knew about from historical records, but we never actually had tangible evidence of. And so what we've done as part of the project is to preserve these here. And in 100 years, if all else has been lost, if our records are lost and there's, say there's some big fire and the internet no longer exists, they will know from this material evidence that there was an 1880s era construction back here. And that's sort of what we do. It's sort of a preservation ethic at the Presidio is just to leave anything that we don't have to remove uh, in place. Thank you.